Welcome, citizen, to another StarCraft Nation broadcast. This is your host, Venerati. Today, we'll be traveling to the exotic lands of South Korea. Not really. We've been there several times already, so I guess it's not that exotic anymore. However, we're going to see Boxer as Man of One Way going up against... Oh, I'm probably going to butcher this, but... Jai Tae Hun? Uh, if that's not correct, go ahead and let me know. But that's the best my southern boy accent can do. So... Anyway, we're going to see some TVT today, so it's going to be interesting to see if they mirror each other in build orders or if they kind of diverge and we're going to see, you know, maybe a, a four or three racks versus uh, some sort of early mech or a lot of Hellion harass. Also something I want to make note of, the patch release was today and super excited about that, chiefly with the Zerg, the increase of range of the Roaches from 3 to 4. So really interested to see how that affects the gameplay because we're probably going to see a lot more Roaches on the field due to the range, uh, allowing them to really field more units in a uh, DPSing manner. So basically what I mean by that is you're able to move more your Roaches up and they're able to shoot uh, sooner, whereas you see them go up against Stalkers with their range, they generally have to walk up pretty far, and that means you've got three rows of stalkers shooting at one row of uh, of roaches. So either way, pretty sure that's going to be make a big difference in these Zerg builds. Also, pretty cool supply supply depots got beefed up a little bit. So now instead of being made of rice paper, they are made of oh uh, I don't know cloth. Not much, but it might play a. I mean, it might affected i'm not sure the banelings i think will still be able to run through it relatively easy also uh the requirements for building a barracks now have been changed to where instead of having a command center has to be down for you to build a barracks pre this patch now you only have to have a supply depot so that's going to be interesting i don't know if that's going to encourage more terran you know late game floating around bs so you, let's say your command center got sniped and you've got some sort of base race going on. You've got minerals sitting in your pocket, but you don't have any SCVs. Or, I, I don't know the situation, but... Either way, that's going to be interesting to see if that changes the game style. Also, Void Rays. Um, some... This might... I'm not really sure how most people feel about this, but might be seeing uh, them being nerfed for the charge as it takes a little bit longer, and they do a little bit less damage later but they do a little bit more damage earlier on, so they're not completely weak and useless when they first go up against something. But enough about the patch notes. Well, let's go ahead and focus on the game at hand. We are in Zelnaga Caverns. So a pretty... I like this match a lot. I love the, the secluded bases. I don't like back doors. I know well, you might say something against that, but I'm kind of a... You know, I'm a, I'm a coward, I guess, when it comes to my main bases. We've got this one nice ramp right here. And so our blue Terran... Uh, what am I going to call him? Hun. Hun is uh is occupying his ramp with the Marines. He is gonna go for a Ghost Academy, I believe. Oh, he He got his Ghost Academy at 21. So he is definitely not going a standard build. And I want to go ahead and make note of this proxy factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess that he's gonna go ahead and land the factory over here. These these bases being so expansive, you generally don't consciously think of seeing well, you don't consciously think of, you know, putting buildings out here. It's just, it's not natural. It's not natural for me personally. Though, I do want to make note of this supply depot placement. I do like this, uh, kind of blocking off this back alleyway, at least in one way, so that a Hellion couldn't run up in here, or whatever critter you got couldn't really pillage the, the, uh, the supply line re easily. Of course, for Boxer here, we have a lot of Hellions on the field. Let's go and look at the unit stat. We got eh, four Hellions running around. But these Hellions are so good at harassment. And Hun is just barely going to be able to throw up these supply depots in time. If Boxer had chosen, he could have been able to run past this bunker and come up in here and really do some damage to all these SCVs, especially with the dedicated Hellion attack. Seeing as we have six Hellions right now, so those six Hellions would have really been doing a lot of economic damage. And if these Marines had come out of their bunker... He could have easily have pillaged all of them with his flame attack. And we do have this factory coming down here. And they do re he, it does release a Hellion. But all those SCVs do turn on that Hellion. And the Hellion wisely runs away. 
But of course, now we've got 6v1 Hellion action here, and that one, <laughs> he gets one shot off, but all six of those Hellions basically one shot him. So that Hellion did not have a prong and prosperous life. We do see some Vikings coming online for Boxer. This factory is going to try to run away, but these Vikings will be able to shoot it down, I believe. Yes, they do start coming after it, and these Marines are adding their fire to it. So this factory is going to do one last little scouting run before it dies. And just also want to make a note of the second command center coming online for Boxer. So we are going to see Boxer probably go ahead and jump it over here to his natural. Going to go ahead and try to get a second, second base up and running. Meanwhile, Hun is going to go ahead and go for four racks. And he already has four ghosts out. So I don't know if he's going to make a push with these ghosts. These ghosts are relatively good and well, they are relatively effective against light units. They do 20 damage. So these Marines will definitely fall prey, well, huh, not his Marines, but Boxer's Marines will definitely fall prey to, well, there aren't really that many Marines, but they will fall prey to those sniper rounds, not sniper rounds, the ghost rounds. And also, these ghosts have the sniper ability, which does 45 damage, period, ignores all armor, so able to snipe these Marauders or the Hellions or whatever he chooses to my, uh micro so we do have him running up here i really feel that he is outmatched in this in this instance so all of these snipers coming in here sniping these marauders seeing these marauders go down all of these hellions go down these these ghosts doing a really good job i really wouldn't have thought that those ghosts really would have been able to do that much I don't really see uh, ghosts use that early on oh, i haven't seen it that much but these vikings landing and able to to soak up a lot of that damage able to ward off all of these ghosts I really think Hun did a good job of backing out of that conflict. Originally, I had doubted his the competence of that army completely. However, we do see Boxer throwing it on a missile turret. I like this. Not that Boxer has seen any sort of air threat, but he wants to be able to see those ghosts. He's expecting Hun to go ahead and research the cloaking ability, but we don't actually see that. So, kind of wasted. Maybe you could say it's going to go ahead and knock down those medevacs. I don't think that that Hun is really going to get his medevacs that close. I don't think Hun would would do something of that nature, especially this high tier. However, you know, it's only 100 gold. 100 gold. <laughs> Hello, Warcraft 3. No, it's only 100 men. So we do see Hun moving out once again. These Vikings are going to be kind of in a flanking position to kill this medevac. So Hun, their med uh, boxer, has spotted Hun's forces. So these, these Vikings are moving in here. These Marines are soaking up some damage from those Marauders. We do see the Snipers going ahead and using their Sniper rounds against these Marauders. The Marines are retreating from these from the Man of One Way army. These Snipers are coming in here. They are sniping. We do see all of these Marauders going down. But these, these Vikings are desperately trying to fend them off. These Vikings are going down to the Snipers and their Sniper rounds. However, the Ghosts do finally succumb to that armor and back out of there. So... Really, it's kind of been even. Look, look at the loss tab. Yes, quite even in the loss here. That one Viking going down and making, putting Boxer in it, uh, behind just ever so slightly. And we have, we have the Hun army coming in here once again, trying to take out these units. There aren't that many units. These sniper rounds taking out these Marauders. Great macro, great micro by Hun. Really, just neutering these Marauders. These Marauders not able to do much against these ghosts. Of course, we do have yet another another push here by Hun. Hun doing a great job of reinforcing his units. Coming up here, don't know if he's going to wait for another another kind of wave of reinforcements or if he's going to wait for a medevac. I do not... Let's go ahead and look at the production tab. We do have another medevac coming online, but I do not think Hun is going to wait for that. We have one more ghost joining the fun, and we have a bunch more Marines coming in here. So we are going to see another clash here. We see this Viking coming here. This Viking does go down. All of these SCVs soaking up a little bit of damage, but there are just not enough Marauders to take all of the sniper rounds. The ghost doing a great job of killing all of these units. These SCVs wisely run away, trying not to take the brunt of this damage. And we see Boxer retreating back into his base. Boxer has a, great, a ton of barracks, but just n not enough standing units. And we have all the SCVs coming off the line. These SCVs are going to try to kill all these units. These guys are soaking up so much damage. These SCVs are able to basically act like a meat shield for these Marauders and Marines to DPS down these units. These ghosts are running away. The slowing effect is going to make that one marine to marine that ghost is going to get trampled these ghosts are not going to survive all of these ghosts go down so great use of by boxer of his scvs to soak up damage it's you're in a you don't want to do it 
you're not in a good position when you're forced to do it, but luckily Boxer had enough SCVs to soak up the damage and still have some sort of income. Let's go and look at the income tab here. Yes, in fact, Boxer doesn't even really look like he took that much damage, even though he is 26 to 39 harvester-wise. Great use of the mules and the orbital command, keeping Boxer in the game, stabilizing his economy after losing so many harvesters. Of course, we are going to see Hun go ahead and kill these destructible rocks so that he can get that high yield, trying to uh, really take advantage of his push into Boxer's base and going to uh, basically try to establish that high yield base, going to make it a, uh, a really a, a a bastion, if you, especially if you drop down a planetary fortress, going to block off this walkway. Of course, Boxer could go ahead and circumvent that by coming around here and setting up some tanks, because we do see Boxer bringing on tanks, so these tanks are going to be so effective against those clumps of Marines and Ghosts. Now, Marines, I do not believe, have shields for Hun. Go take a gander. No, they do not. And they do not have any weapons upgrade. So go look at the production tab. We don't actually see... We actually see a drop here by Boxer coming in here making those SCVs run away for their life. These, mar these Marauders are going to go down, and Boxer doing a good job of doing as much damage as he possibly can, and then running away, taking no damage himself. So all of those SCVs are forced to evacuate that mineral line. Great job of by Boxer of not letting Hun go unmolested during this little lull in the action. So great, great props. And all the meanwhile, he is going ahead and just building up a rather massive army. Let's go and look at the army tab. We are seeing a 110 to 97, so I'm, I don't know if that is with the Harvester count. A little bit of that is in the Harvester count. However, this army of Boxer is looking relative, really mean, and looks like they are going to... We don't really see... We don't see many ghosts in Hun's army, so I guess Hun has gone ahead and decided to shun away from... Or shy away and shun the ghosts because the effectiveness of the ghosts is going to wane this late in the game. We have one really ballsy Marine chasing down this, this medevac. And we do see Hun coming out here and killing the occupants of this cell Naga Tower. This Marine will die. And Hun, I don't know, Hun's army is woefully inadequate right now to be pushing out. I'm not sure. He does see uh, Boxer's army with a good scan and does choose to back up. So is this command center going to turn into an orbital command? No, he can't actually because he does not have an engineering bay down. So Hun, I'm not sure if Hun was really expecting it to last this long, hoping that these ghosts would be effective enough to basically cripple cripple Boxer or even just be able to outright destroy his base. Of course, this one Marine is going to run into all of these units and is going to die, sacrificing himself for the betterment of Hun's army. So Hun able to know that uh, Boxer is kind of pushing out here. And of course, likewise, Hun is able to destroy that SCV. Now, I don't, I'm not sure why, why Boxer is running away from this. Boxer is in a great position right now. He has the tanks, he has enough marauders, he has the upgraded marines with stem. Both both armies have stem at this point, but these the key factor is that these marines have the shields. So we have Boxer coming here on the other side of this of this little pav not pavilion, but wall. And we do see the tanks setting up, so they will be able to shell this army if they choose to get close. We have five tanks basically set up with the Zelnaga Tower and with flying units. So we do see shells raining down on Hun's army. Hun trying to get around it. I, I think that Hun is going to basically press the mobility advantage and try to push up into it. But actually we have Hun clashing with Boxer. There's just not enough here for Hun to best Boxer's army. These tanks are just doing too much and we see Hun tap out. Now that was that was uh, unfortunate engagement for Hun. Hun, if he had waited a little bit longer, I think that he would have been able to to better himself, uh, get a better position and all that. All of that. Uh, these tanks were just too much. Hun didn't have anything to answer the tanks. He didn't have any sort of air unit or anything of that nature. Of course, we did see a nuke coming online, so that could have been interesting to see how Hun had deployed that nuke if, he had, if the game had lasted that long. So, either way... Boxer takes this out of the GSL. Uh, this is out of the GSL season one, I think, of the uh, at the 64 mark. So, Boxer is going to go home with a little bit of money, as the prize package from GSL is so fat. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me today, and until next time, citizen, stay safe.